is why we're going to be changing the uh, the rotors. You can see how badly pitted these rotors are. So even if you tried to machine these rotors, they would not come out uh, too good. They would wind up with a problem. So rotors are so inexpensive, we're going to go ahead and we're going to replace them and uh, we're going to get started. So let me just show you a few things you want to check. Be, uh, before you even get started, uh, you're going to need a couple of tools. You're going to need a uh, 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 some tool to, so you can hit with a hammer to to try to loosen up these uh, these screws in here. Um, a driver, uh, a piece of metal, uh, extension, whatever you have. Uh, you're going to need some sockets, a couple of screwdrivers, a tool to push the uh, piston back in to recess it, and a couple of uh, a, a ratchet and a hammer. And of course, some some brake caliper grease also because you have to lubricate everything before you put it together. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to we're going to come back over here and we're going to check to make sure that these uh, these slide pins right here are working correctly. The problem with the slide pins is that they do freeze up. When they freeze up, you uh, you the uh, caliper doesn't slide the way it's supposed to. So we're going to check these to make sure that it's okay. Um, so let me. Uh, show you how we're going to go about doing that. What you do is you take a screwdriver. Let me just put this camera down and I'll show you. What you would do is you put a screwdriver in through the back of the, the brake pad here and you get it in between the, the brake pad and the caliper and you pry the caliper this way here. Let me show you. All right, what you do is you go in here with the screwdriver and you put the screwdriver in through the back right here. You see how it sticks through right there? And then what you do is you just keep pressure on here. And what that does is it recesses the piston, which is down inside, inside there. So we have to make sure that that recesses all the way back. Next thing we're going to do here is after we push the pistons back in, we're going to check these sliders to make sure that they're sliding the way it's supposed to. And you see how this caliper moves back and forth right here nice and freely, top and bottom? See how it's moving back and forth fairly easy? That's a good, that's a good thing. So we know these slide pins are not frozen, so we're going to be uh, lubricating these before you put it back together. So uh, let me uh, get started and I'll, I'll take you through it step by step. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take that uh, that um, the, the, uh, the socket or a tool or whatever you have, a piece of brass or anything, um, a brass drift, is you're going to go on here with this here and you're going to hit it a couple times to loosen these screws up because they can be very tight and hard to remove. If you do it like this, you hit it a couple of shots firmly, you'll be able to get these out without a problem. So uh, let's get started. Put your drift on here, take it and hit it firmly. And then you should be able to get it out with a regular screwdriver. If, if it doesn't come out, just take the drift and hit it a couple of more times pretty firmly and you should be able to get them out. Um, if by chance you can't get them out, um, you can drill them out too. You, if you had to and they stripped out, you can drill right through here with a drill and drill it out until it's, until it's gone and you'll be able to get it off that way. Alright, next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the, uh, the caliper from the car. There's two uh, bolts in the back right here that hold the caliper onto the car. I'll get some light over here for you. You have one right here that we're going to take out and you've got another one down on the bottom right here. We're going to take these off and we're just going to relocate this to the side. Then we're going to take off the bolts that hold the mounting knuckle on. So uh, let me do that and I'll show you. Just so you know, the bolts on the back of the uh, on the caliper here, they're usually 12 millimeter, but sometimes they're, they will vary also. Okay, we can bolt them up. Don't throw these away because you're going to need to put these back on later on when you uh, re reassemble it. Okay. 
And what you're going to do is you're going to relocate the caliper just out of the way um, so that it doesn't interfere with what you're going to do. Uh, you never want to leave a caliper dangling by the hose because you could always run into a problem, uh, you know, damaging it. Take a piece of wire or something, just slide it through the caliper and take it and you just relocate it out of your way like that. Keeps it supported and it doesn't, uh, doesn't interfere with anything. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove those bolts in the back here that I was telling you about that hold the uh, mounting bracket on. We're going to take out that one and we're going to take out that one right there. Um, most of the time they're 17 millimeter, but let's grab a, uh, a socket and we're going to give it a shot and we'll, uh, we'll get that out there. All right, grab the 17 millimeter. As you can tell, it gets pretty rusty. thing we're going to do is we're going to take the rotor off the car. In this case here the rotor is fairly loose um, so we're not really that bad. Uh, there's another way you can remove it. If the rotor is very tight you can't get, get it off the car. One, you can bang the heck out of it with a hammer and get it to come off because we're going to be replacing it anyway. But if you needed to keep the rotor and you wanted to take it off without damaging it, you can get a bolt and you screw a, a bolt in right through here. You screw it in, you tighten it down, and it pops the rotor right off the car. So uh, that's something else you could do also. But in this case, we're throwing these away. We're going to get new ones because of their condition. So uh, let me just show you one other thing. Another thing you have to make sure of, too, is that the face of the, the hub right here for the bearing is nice and clean. If you have any kind of rust or any kind of uh, um, anything on there, you need to clean this off, whether you use a razor blade, you use a, a piece of sandpaper, or whatever you use, you may have to clean this off. Make sure that surface is clean. Um, all right, let me grab the brake pads, and I'm going to uh, grab the rotor, and we're going to get this job uh, put back together. So uh, let me grab some stuff, and we'll come right back. Very important part of doing any brake job uh, is going to be replacing the, uh, the hardware, because the hardware gets, as you can see, it gets a little bit rusted, a little bit oxidized in the brake pads don't slide the way they're supposed to. When this fits in here like this, or this way, this is supposed to slide nice and easily through here. If it's rusted or, or has any kind of uh, uh, damage to it, it's not going to slide properly. So what we're going to do is we're going to be replacing these. And if you buy a quality brake pad, a lot of times it comes with it. If not, you get one, you'll save yourself a lot of headaches in the whole room. All right? First thing you do is you just pry on a clip, and it comes right off fairly easy to put them back on, but you have to check in here to make sure that there's no sediment or no rust or anything in there. If there is a little rust in here, you can take a file, a piece of sandpaper, or whatever, and clean it off. And the reason you're going to clean it is because if you put your new brake pad in there and there's a little bit of rust or whatever on there, it's going to cause the shoe, the brake pad, to bind up a little bit. Uh, the way you put the new clip on is very simple. You just put the clip on the top like this try to show you and it just pushes right over the top like that and that's how it fits in there these little tabs go on the inside and this piece here pushes right over the top like that all right we're gonna do the same thing on this one here just get in here with a screwdriver and just pry it comes right off real easy again check to make sure there's no rust or anything inside here it's clean so we're not going to worry about this I'm going to clean this a little bit here because there is a little rust on that. Take your new slider, put it over the top like this, and you push it down and right into position like that.
and they just fit right over the top fairly easy like that. All right. Then we're going to do is we're going to those sliders we talked about. We're going to pull them out a little bit like this. Take them out one at a time, though, because they have to go back into the same place they came out. Put a little bit of lubricant on each one of them, like this. You put it back in here, then you push it back in, and you make sure your, your boot comes back up to the top. And as you can see now, it slides nice and easy. Same thing on this one here, take it out, a little bit of lubricant on it, and you can put it back in. I, I, I'm sure you've seen people on YouTube and other places doing this where they don't lubricate this stuff. Take my word for it, I've been doing this for a long time. Lubricate it and you won't have a problem. Put it on dry and you're gonna have a problem with it. Maybe not today, but in a short period of time you're going to. All right, push it in, make sure it slides easy. Make sure your boot is back up on the top where it belongs. Next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take a little bit of brake lubricant and put it anywhere that the brake pad touches on the new hardware so that everything slides nice and easy. Same thing here. And then just put your pad in there just to make sure. Now when you previously took your, your brake pad off, make sure you find out where your indicator was on there and you're gonna put it back on the same way as it came off. All right, this goes into the, to the mounting knuckle like this. You turn it very like sideways just a little bit. Put it in there. It's a little bit tight because everything is brand new, but we can do it on there, it'll slide nice and easy. in here and it slides nice and easy just as it's supposed to. Same thing on the top, nice and easy. It fits snug, but it still moves. We'll do the same thing. You take your, your other brake pad, you put it on like this, just push it in very lightly on the top, and then you push it in here, and you just push it in, turn it sideways a little bit. A little trick as I always do is put it in sideways a little bit like that, and once you're into the mounting uh, hardware, you turn it sideways and it fits in there perfectly and then it slides nice and easy just as it's supposed to with the proper lubricant on there it works perfectly all right let's get back over to the car let's get this back uh, the rotor on and we'll wrap this job up now we're going to put the rotor back on make sure you line it up with the holes with the threaded holes then we're going to uh, put the rotor screws back through all right and you catch these with the with your screwdriver Thing on the other one and tighten it up. Nice and tight. Okay. All right. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the caliper uh, mounting bracket that we previously installed our brake pads on, and we're going to take it. We're going to put it over the top like this. Slide it into position. And then squeeze your brake pads so that they don't pop out on you. Grab your two 17 millimeters that you previously took out. And you catch both of them in there before you tighten it up. Catch them both in there. Once you have them caught, you tighten them in as far as you can by hand. And then once you can't turn it anymore, you get in there with your ratchet and you tighten it down with your ratchet. Just watch your pads don't fall out, squeeze them back together. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to get our caliper back on. Now, now remember before when we had that screwdriver in there, we pressed this piston all the way back in. Um, remember I told you about having this tool, this tool to press it back in. If by chance you needed to push the pistons back in uh, with that tool, I'm going to show you how to do it. Let me grab the brake pads. So. If by chance it's not quite far enough in, you can take the set of brake pads and just put them in here like this and you grab this tool and this tool and catch it in there first and I'll show you how it goes.
this is how that tool works. It squeezes the, uh, the brake pad, pistons, pushes that, that piston back into the bore right here. Um, but in this case, it's already pushed in because we did it with the screwdriver. If you recall, that screwdriver pushes the piston back in, so it saves us from having to do this step here. But just in case you had to, you could do it with this tool here. But do it with the screwdriver, it'll save you a couple of minutes. All right, make sure you put the, the caliper back on the way you took it off. I've seen people already put the caliper back on with the brake hose twisted like this. Make sure it's not twisted. Make sure you put it on so that it's, that it's perfectly, show you, that it's perfectly straight. There's no kinks or twists or anything in it. All right, then you push your, your caliper back on. We're gonna catch both of these screws that we previously took out. These are the 12 millimeters. Catch them both. Same thing on the bottom. Screw them in as far as you can by hand so you don't cross thread them. Once you have them screwed in, then you just tighten up your, uh, your mounting screws on the caliper. Show you something real quick. The um, slide pin sometimes they will rotate on you. I'll show you what I mean. Not all the time, but sometimes. When you're on here with a uh, with a ratchet trying to tighten it, well in this case it's not turning, but if if you were trying to turn this screw to make it tight here for the uh, for the uh, for the, for the caliper, and this was not tightening up. You, sometimes you keep turning it, and it, it just keeps on turning. You would take a wrench, and you would get in here with the wrench, and you would hold the slide pin to keep it from turning. Let's see what happens on the bottom one. See down here? When you turn this, you see how that piece spins? You can't really tighten that screw up all the way. So what you would do is you would get on here with a wrench and just hold it with a wrench right here to keep it from turning. Like this. And then you would tighten up your ratchet. I'm going to put this down and I'll show you what I mean. Now you can hold it. And it tightens up without a problem. Alright, so now you know everything is tight. Alright, let me just recap everything for you. We have our rotor mounted on. We put our two screws back into the rotor to hold it onto the, uh, to the hub. We have our mounting bracket on. We changed the hardware on the mounting bracket. We lubricated all the points where the pad touches. We lubricated the slide pins. We tightened up the 17 millimeter bolts that hold the mounting bracket onto the car itself. And we tightened up the 12 millimeters that hold the, uh, the caliper to the mounting bracket. That's it. We're all set. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go around to the other side. We're going to go ahead and we're going to, uh, you know, replace the brakes on the other side. And uh, one thing you want to do is after you get the brakes done in here, you want to go into the car. You want to pump the brake pedal several times so that you can push this piston in here back out so that you have a nice firm pedal. Um, that's it. You're all set. All right. Thanks for uh, watching and we'll see you on the next one.